Hello there. Uh, joining me again for another video on the Motorola HT600E radio programming software and how to get them out of band, how to program them onto amateur radio frequencies. Okay, so at the moment we're we're just if we just go right back uh, to where we were in the previous video, uh, which is dealing with the programming software itself. Um, I've got the Motorola HD600 programming software running here and then in the background I've got an actual config file that I've taken from an old Motorola HD600 e that was originally on the police band back in the 1980s, 1990s and I'm going to show you how you get the radio to accept out of band frequencies so if we just look at the programming software again um, if you have a radio as I do, which is banded here, 438 to 470 megahertz, uh, which is obviously item number 5 in the menu, this means that this radio's firmware that's stored within it will only work between 438 to 470. So if you were to choose item number 4, for example, from the menu and try and program in a load of channels between 403 to 433 megs, then try and program that into the radio. What a lot of people find is that they can create files on the uh, programming software and save them to disk in that frequency range. They can try and program that into the radio and it won't work. The radio just flashes 88s on the display, goes out of lock on transmit and receive, does, does nothing. Gives the impression that it's corrupt. So what I'm going to show you now is uh, is basically what radio amps often fall, the traps are fall into. So they'll select item number 4, which is 403 to 433 megahertz. They'll edit the per channel info, which again is item number 4, <coughs> again on the menu. And they'll start creating a, a band plan, basically. So they'll put in 433.00, yeah. And do the same, maybe 433.0, yeah. And they'll do that throughout the entire channels all the way up to channel 99 here from 00 to 99, 100 channels. Then they'll come out, they'll go straight to either program radio or they'll save that to file and then obviously it's stored on the, on the disc. And they'll be able to recall it every time as well if it's stored on the disc and it'll show it in the environment here what channels and, pro and frequencies you're on. However, the problem comes when you come to program the radio. This radio software doesn't just program the radio when you hit, but when you hit item number six there in the menu, and it, without asking questions of the radio, the radio has to be read first before it can be programmed. So when you go to hit number six here, it doesn't say something like read radio first or anything like that. What I mean by that is, is that the radio will automatically send information about its firmware in other words what frequency plans the radio will work to to the programmer and it will tell the programmer that I'm a 438 to 470 megahertz radio it doesn't matter that the channel information that's stored in the software you're putting into it has got the amateur radio frequencies out of banding it'll still put those in but the radio still will not work after it's been programmed. And here's why I'm going to show you. If we just minimise that for a moment, all files that are, are stored by the Motorola HT600 EXE file are stored in a file called a file format called E31. Okay? So for example, this is a file I made many years ago for amateur radio frequencies. And it's called G7RP19.E31. Now, these are the config files. So if you had lots of configs, you would see them all called E31 with the file name. So if we look at this in depth now, this is the file that I made a long time ago. And this contains frequency information in here, which I'm going to show you. And there's patterns to it. Once you recognize those patterns, you'll be able to do this yourself quite easily. So I've, I've already opened up here an amateur radio frequency uh, config, which works successfully. I'm now going to open up one that was originally for its designed frequency band, a 438 to 470 megahertz. And it, this is an old home office police config. 
Now, straight away, we can see some patterns here. Uh, this is a serial number of a radio, for example, uh, with a load of other parameters that look like there's some kind of configuration. Um, again, here. These do look like CTCSS to me. 131.8, 131.8, 118, 118.8 hertz. They look like CTCSSs. Not sure what that is. Don't matter. But this is where it gets interesting. So this here is channel 1. If you notice, it goes 0, 1, 0, 1 again. 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 3, 4. It goes right the way down, right up to channel 99. But if we look at the side of the channel 1, so we have receive channel, transmit channel, that's the way that they've architecture's made up then we have the frequency 450 525 0 so that's the receive frequency the transmit frequency is 464 5250 these look like all the parameters surrounding the individual things that were in the per channel info and that's what that is uh, that make up all the scans, CTCSSs, all that rubbish. And then at the end, we've got these two here, 46s. Now, what these are very important. These are what you change when you edit your own frequency. When you program a radio directly from the programming software with frequencies that are out of band, it will put them in here, as it should do. But it doesn't change these at the end. It will keep these. So the frequencies in here all change, but these won't. And so what happens is, is the VCO, these are the control words for the VCO and synthesizer. And basically, as you move the frequencies of the radio, even in-band, these parameters change slightly. And the reason why they do that is so that it can keep the VCO and the synthesizer in lock on receive and transmit frequencies. And so these parameters need to be changed in order to get the radio to unlock. So you can use a notepad editor, <coughs> you can use Microsoft Word, you can use any editor you want, Word, Star, whatever. But what you mustn't do, you can edit frequencies in here if you want, but what you mustn't do is get this line or any of the lines in here out by one kilter, either up or down. So in other words... If you were to type in a frequency, for example, um, let's say 433.012, uh, then 5, you've noticed there, you put the decimal point in which you don't need to do for a start off, and in doing that, it's knocked it on one step further. If you were then save that file, because you haven't corrected your mistake, try and program the radio, it'll corrupt it. So it must be precise you've got to be very careful how you do it as long as you're tidy with your data input you're fine so that frequency there 433.0125 uh, will be the receive frequency the transmit frequency again we could have um, 434.500 megahertz for example again we've made a mistake even though it's in line We've got a decimal point. We don't need that. So beware of that. Now it's one line in, indented. So again, that's an error. So make sure you correct that. So we've got 434500 transmit, just for argument's sake. We then change these to M parameters. Well, what do we change them to? Here's what we change them to. This is an amateur radio band that I've created, which works. So channel 1, channel 1, 433.025, receive. Uh, 433.0250, receive. 434.6250, transmit. And then we've got 2.2 two at the end. And that's the same for all the channels, right the way down to like 435 megs or whatever. So what you do here is you change those two end parameters to 2.2. Two. So you could have a mixture of channels in here you could have a lot of amateur radio frequencies in they'd all be at 2.2 two at the end that will allow the VCO and synthesizer to lock at these frequencies at 433 434 same on channel 2 you could do the same all the way through 
Uh, if you wanted all the channels in the radio to be amateur radio frequencies, these would all be 2 2 on 70 sems. If you wanted mixed channels, you could then just do the channels that you want um, that are on amateur band and leave the rest that aren't amateur band the, the same as what they should be. And then you can put in PMR446 frequencies, high band UHF frequencies, you could have a mixture. But at the end of it all, what you must do is make sure that all the columns are aligned, that you've not got anything out of out of out of line, <coughs> and that you save that as as whatever it is dot e thirty one. So it will always prompt you to try and save it as a text document. You don't do that. You save it as a dot e thirty one, and then when you save that. Uh, into say well for argument's sake my documents then that will be in the right format because the Motorola programmer can't read any file unless it's got E31 on the end of it it doesn't matter about the file type there you can leave that as text then when you click save now if we go then to uh, my documents and then have a look in there we've got the E31 file and that's recognised by the programmer then the software not only in the radio service software in this environment but also the radio itself and then that will override any of the parameters that the radio returns to the software saying I'm on this frequency band but you're trying to get me on this it doesn't matter because the, the parameters at the end of this string here are correct and the radio accepts that the only time the radio doesn't accept working on frequencies when the frequencies here and the numbers at the end don't match the band split that the radio's on. And so that's why when you look at the amateur radio band plan I've done here, this one, they're all twos at the end. As long as you do that on the 77 ones and then save it. So it doesn't matter how you do it, whether you create your own config file and copy the lines all the way down, right to the bottom, channel 99. Um in this environment or whether you do it from the actual programming software here which you can do and then save that file so you you then save to file and then you would call it something save it and then you would use a word processor such as this notepad for example to edit that file and you would change all the numbers at the end then to 2 2 and save it and that's basically what you do that's how you program it with the amateur radio frequency band and then you don't need to do anything else other than that and uh, you can call it what you like and put it in the software environment so you edit the config file you must make sure it's called E31 <coughs> you must also make sure that none of these lines are out by just even one one mark and if you do make a mistake and you can't correct it, come out of it and start all over again. Otherwise, you just make a whole mess of it. But that's how you do it. So, see how you go on. And uh, don't worry. You know, if you make a mistake, you can always do it again. Thank you for watching the video. The next part will be on <coughs> doing alignments and setting up the scan feature. Thank you.